So do you think that making a million dollars is impossible? But becoming debt free and financially independent is impossible? Do you think that after everything you've invested in, your money, your business, your restaurant, your career, after losing it all through the COVID-19 pandemic and getting back up again is impossible? Well, in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, we're gonna share with you how the Bible can help you do what you think is the impossible. Starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, never getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you for the Money Smart Home Office here. And every Sunday, we're doing this biblical baller breakdowns. Again, we still got to find a new title for these Sunday episodes. Again, we want to remind you that you are part of the community that's helping us get a name for these Sunday Bible studies of money, prosperity, and wealth through biblical perspectives. But we need a name. Again, the winner receives a $500 cash sent to you and your church or charity, $500 in your name. Once we get to 75,000 subs, we're going to award that person. And my team is right now selecting a lot of names, screenshotting a lot of uh, responses and answers. We're setting them to the side and we're going to review all these answers. So don't think that we are going to forget your name, even though you're four or five episodes in. We're screenshotting every person that's participating in this. And we're going to select the winner once we reach 75,000 subs. All right, so let's get right into it. So how do you do what you think is the impossible? Like, I never thought that in a million years, I'd ever get to a point of making six figures, half a million dollars, a million dollars. I always thought that was impossible, especially a kid like me from an average and ordinary neighborhood, immigrant parents from the Philippines, went to the Marine Corps for eight years, making $20,000 a year as a sergeant. I never thought that becoming financially independent was ever something that I can do until I'd started to discover what the wisest and richest king who ever lived named King Solomon, who wrote the book in the Bible in the Old Testament, called Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, and he talked about something called diligence. What is diligence? Let's have a quick review of the definition of diligence. See here in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, it reads, Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. Simply put, diligence is this. Let's put up a definition of it. Diligence is a learnable skill that combines creative persistence, a smart working effort rightly planned and rightly performed in a timely, efficient and effective manner to attain a result that is pure and of the highest quality of excellence. And I'm getting that definition from this book, The Richest Man Who Ever Lived, written by Stephen K. Scott, suggested reading for you in terms of biblical principles on secrets to success, wealth and happiness. Again, find the link at the bottom here in the description. You got to get this book to apply it with your Bible study here on unpacking and peeling out the definitions of wealth, success, prosperity in the books of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, gifted author here, Stephen K. Scott, and also accomplished multi-multi-millionaire. Because here's the other part. There's a difference between hard work and smart work. I see a lot of people that can work really, really hard. You know, oftentimes I get asked, hey Matt, what's the greatest skill that you learned from being in the Marine Corps? Easy thing is for us to answer is hard work. We can work hard, we can work hard, we can work hard. But I know there's many times that we've been in the Marine Corps that we worked hard, but it really wasn't smart. Like we would do certain things that was just for the effort of doing that. Said, so, oh, we're Marines, but it wasn't smart. There's a difference between hard work and smart work. For example, if you were asked to cut down a tree, would you cut down a tree with a hammer? I mean, you could work really hard and boom, boom with a hammer and eventually over time work really, really hard, but then eventually over hours, days, weeks, depending how big this tree is, you can be hammering, hammering, hammering away to try to cut down this tree, or would you be smart and say, hey, let me get an ax, or even better, let me get a chainsaw. See, there's a difference between hard work and smart work, and sometimes, most times, in difficult situations, you get to realize what is the difference between smart work and hard work, and how do I accomplish something without necessarily putting in all this effort, but how do I smartly apply my time and effort. See, I'm in the sales business in the insurance industry. I see a lot of salespeople sometimes say, Matt, I'm at the office. I work really hard, work really hard. But when it comes to smart work, are you busy or are you actually productive? Because I see a person that's diligent that can work one or two or three hours, be out for lunch into appointments and accomplish so much in a week versus somebody who's at the office distracted, 
different websites, different videos, not making their phone calls. Yes, they're working hard potentially, but not working smart at all. And their week turns into two weeks, turns into three weeks of zero productivity. See, there's a big difference between hard work and smart work. The next thing here is our human nature. You gotta understand our human nature desires nothing more than to be lazy. That's why most people who don't find passion in their work, they don't find purpose in their career or business, they cannot wait till Friday. The TGI Friday mentality says, man, I cannot wait. Why? Because our natural disposition is to be lazy. We want instant gratification. Now, the recording of this video, it's going into February of the new year. How many people do you think who had New Year's resolution at the beginning of the year, right by right now, have probably given up on their New Year's resolution. Do you know why they've probably given it up? I mean, the joke in the gym is, if you want your equipment back, you want your normal routine back and not be clogged up at the gym again, just wait till February or March and the gym will be right back where it was before the New Year. Why? Because our natural disposition as human beings is lazy, instant success. How many of you have heard that terminology, Netflix and chill? Everybody wants to do just Netflix and chill, hang out, They'll binge watch TV, sitting on their butt, on the couch. And by the way, this is not a popular message. Hard work is a very difficult message to sell. But it's easier to sell? Just take it easy. Kick your feet up, relax. And potentially, success is coming your way. But according to Solomon, that is not diligence. That's laziness. So here are seven benefits of actually applying diligence in your life. Let's look at number one. If you apply diligence in your life, into your work, into your finances, into your career, into your business, you're gonna have a distinct advantage. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 21, verse five. It reads like this. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. See, when you have plans and you're diligent, you're applying yourself, you're gonna have a distinct advantage versus somebody that's just shooting from the hip. Number two, the benefit of diligence is you're going to have control. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. It reads like this. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in slave labor. You see, if you want to lose control, if you want to have something else yanking you left and right, well, guess what? Don't operate in diligence. Number three, the benefit of diligence is fulfillment. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse four. It reads like this. The sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Again, that word keeps coming up. Diligent, 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 diligence. It gives you fulfillment. Not the lazy person, not the sluggard. They may want, they may crave, but if they're lazy and sluggish about things that they want because they're not operating in diligence, they get nothing. They may be satisfied for a minute, but guess what? They're gonna constantly crave and they will not be fulfilled. Number four, benefit of diligent is you're respected and you're sought after. Here's one of my favorite ones. Go to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. It reads like this. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. So if you want to have influence, you want to, you want to have respect, not only amongst your peer group, but respect amongst the people that you look up to and the people they look up to, and you want to be sought after, you want to be consulted, you want your advice, your influence upon the endeavors of other people, Guess what? Operate in diligence because you're going to be giving counsel and advice to kings and leaders. Number five, another benefit of diligence. It needs are satisfied. Your needs will be satisfied. Go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 19. It reads like this. He who works his land, not sitting on his land, he who works his land will have abundant food. But the one who chases fantasies will have his fill of poverty. i tell you this. I used to love video games. I love video games. I was one of the guys who had the first PS1. But the moment I figured I was spending all this time in fantasy land, living a life that I wasn't living, I was winning through the game, but I wasn't winning in my finances. I wasn't winning as a dad. I wasn't winning as an entrepreneur. I wasn't winning as somebody leading. And I realized being in a fantasy land, according to this, again, if you choose fantasy, you're going to have poverty. Now, with that being said, I know, well, Matt, you can't say that about esports. Okay, I get it. Esports. You want to compete? I, I, get, I get gaming is a big thing these days. But listen, man, a lot of these uh, fantasy, the same thing too with books, reading novels and all these different things. Is it really helping you advance your life? Are you caught up in a story, in a storyline of something else? Number six, increasing success. 
The benefit of diligence is increasing success. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 11. It reads like this. This honest money dwindles away. So you can make money. It says you can be, you, you can be in a position of dishonesty. You can still have money. But guess what? It says he is going to dwindle away. But he who gathers money little by little makes it grow. Because that's what diligent people do. They make it, they save it. They make it, they save it. They make it, tithe it, save it, boom. They make it, tithe it, save it, boom. Make it, tithe it, save it, boom. So therefore, the, the things that you like to enjoy, like the fancy cars and the homes and the jewelry, all that stuff, guess what? It's going to be the cost of buying a cup of coffee. Because in the meantime, guess what? You're diligent. Listen, I've seen my own personal mentor, Patrick Bet David, be diligent in his work. I, I witnessed him every day, every week, every month for the last six years, diligent in his work. I've seen his YouTube channel go from four or 5,000 people to today, it's 2.8 million subscribers. Why? Every week, diligence. His team, diligence. Every aspect of them building their business was increasing their diligence. And guess what? They have increasing success. Number seven, you want to have diligence? You want to have profits in your business? You want to have a profitable fine in, in your finances? Guess what? You want to be diligent. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. It reads like this. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Again, I see a lot of people with a good game, man. It's funny how people can show a good game. Social media gives us an opportunity to show a good game. But uh, if you're not willing to work hard behind the scenes, oftentimes people think they can just sit behind the computer and push a couple buttons and, right, or invest in a couple properties or invest in a couple things and think that passive income is going to be their, their, their thing without actually working the business, without actually working the details, without actually applying diligence in all aspects of that business. Again, you might make a profit in one month, two months, one year, two years, but if you're not applying diligence, you'll not be profitable long term. You might have money in the short term, but long term, you will not be profitable. Why? Because you're not applying diligence. Now, what's some of the disadvantages and some of the consequences where you don't apply diligence? Well, number one, instead of having advantage, a tremendous advantage at that, you're going to have consequences of disadvantage. You're going to lack an advantageous angle when trying to compete. And guess what happens? You end up winging it. You're just shooting from the hip. You're not specific. You don't have, you don't have specifics. You don't have goals. You're not tracking the numbers. You're not applying diligence. And guess what? Instead of having an advantage, you will have a disadvantage. Number two, you will be ruled. You'll be controlled, potentially by your boss. Boss telling you, controlling you. Why? Because you don't have latitude. You're not respected or requested in different departments or different companies. You're going to be ruled. Your customers, if you're a business, your customers are going to rule you. Your competition is going to rule you. So you got to ask yourself a question. Do I really want to not apply diligence? Otherwise, I'm ruled. I'm, I'm controlled by somebody else, not me. Number three, if you don't apply diligence, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be constantly craving. You're going to be dissatisfied all the time. There's always some, a nagging feeling. You ever have a, a, a just, you're just craving something? You're just craving, I don't know, craving steak or craving tacos. You're craving something, craving ice cream right? And it's never satisfied. Well, that's the same thing with your career. That's the same thing with your finances. That's the same thing where you're not applying diligence. You're going to be constantly craving it. Again, back to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4. Let me reread it to you. The sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. You are content. Again, a consequence of not applying diligence is lack of of understanding. Do you want wisdom? Well, guess what wisdom seeks? It seeks understanding. It seeks to find different angles, different ways, better ways to do things. Diligence is applied. You got version one, version two, version three, version four, or you just want the same old, same old. I remember hearing that in the government all the time, working for the military. How, how you doing? Same old, same old. Hey, how you doing? Another day, another dollar. Yeah, they might be hard working, but they're not smart working. They're not applying diligence. They're doing just enough to coast. They're doing just enough not to be noticed. I think we use the word skating as a term. What you doing? Dude, you're skating. You're not applying diligence. You're just clocking and clocking and getting a paycheck. You're not advancing your position. You're not creating value for the people around you. You're not creating value for your department. You're not being memorable. And since you're not memorable, guess what? You're not going to be amongst kings and bosses and influence and leaders. And guess what? You don't get promoted. You don't advance. You don't get opportunities coming your way. Another consequence of not applying diligence is number five. Your money, boom, will vanish. You might get money now, but boom, it's gone. We just did an episode. We're talking about how to use money smartly with the stimulus checks that we're getting, unemployment checks that you're getting. Don't use this, don't use it frivolously. Again, what was the sluggards doing? There, on, on Market Watch, there was articles of people um, relief spending. 
like they were taking the COVID relief checks and spending it on things versus things to pay the bills, to put a roof over the head, to advance their family, to take care of their responsibility. Because guess what? We're all in this thing together. And so even though you got money, it's going to disappear if you weren't using diligence. Guess what? If you're not using diligence, people give you money. Uh, we're just having a conversation a while ago about a guy asked me, do, do I use my own money or do I raise money? Well, listen, as an investor and a, somebody who's applied diligence in their life, we like to see somebody put their skin in the game and use their money first before they use our money. Remember one time this uh, young man says, Matt, I want you to fund, I want $150,000. I want you to fund my research. I'm going to solve this problem, solve this issue for restaurants. Awesome. How much money do you need? I, I need this for this. I need this for this. Okay, awesome. Uh, why do you need $50,000 for this? Well, I need to pay my bills. I need to pay for my apartment. I need to pay for my, my car. Pay. Wait, 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 wait. Time, time out. So you tell me I'm funding your lifestyle? I should be funding your business. I mean, you should be funding your idea. I should be funding a solution to the problem you're looking to solve. You, so you tell me you have no skin in the game. Expect me to pay your bills while you build this thing to help restaurants and all these different things. You don't have any skin in the game. Yes, the kid wanted to live on my money and not put, applying any skin in the game. And guess what? He never got money. He never got money from the four or five different investors that were there. And whatever money he did have, Vanish. You know why? Because we got a sense that he was not diligent with his work. He had an idea, but wasn't willing to work and be diligent in applying himself to accomplish whatever goal, whatever solution he was creating to solve that problem. He wasn't applying diligence. As I wrap up, the opposite again of diligence is laziness. So where does laziness come from? Laziness comes from being self-centered, selfish, me, 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 me. It's all about me it's versus becoming a better me to serve other people. See, I get being selfish for a second, so therefore you can better yourself, but if it's being self-centered, where it's just me, 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 self-elevating yourself versus elevating the people around you, that's where laziness comes in. The other part of laziness is arrogance. I know everything, Matt. I got this, I got that. I can't learn, I can't change. I'm right, they're wrong. See, that's where laziness comes in because you don't want to improve. There's been many conflicts that we just faced in the last couple of weeks in our, in our company because we're growing, we're evolving. And uh, arrogance sometimes kicks in. Say, hey, man, how do we have resolved this conflict? How do we diffuse the situation? How do, we, how do we get on the same page and how do we unify? See, sometimes people think that based on certain status levels or income levels, they're good. They don't have to grow. Wrong. You're not applying diligence. See, once you apply diligence, you get to a certain level. Guess what you have to do then once you get to another level? You have to continue to apply level because chance of God, the good Lord wants you to grow. and wants you to be a better magnify for him, for his glory through you. You're the messenger. Another part of laziness is this. Laziness is based on the lack of responsibility. You're irresponsible with the gifts and talents and the money and the finances and the title and the success that you've been given. And when much is given, well, then much is expected. So here's some steps and how to make sure you apply these steps of diligence so therefore you can start doing the impossible. Okay, I'm referencing this book again. You got to check this book out. You got to pick it up. Again, the link is in the description below. The richest man who ever lived. Number one, you have to wake up to reality. And sometimes people don't want to wake up to the reality. You got to look at yourself in the mirror. Uh, let's go to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. It reads like this. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a bandit. And scarcity like an armed man. <laughs> King Solomon, he's just, uh, he's rhyming here. He's sharing with you something here. He's warning you against being lazy. And so when you're looking at, you're waking up to reality, the hard look that you have in the mirror, can you say, hey, let me pay attention, that you think you have more time to accomplish your goals than you think you do. You know, oftentimes, listen, I run a sales organization, Here's a cool thing about a lot of people. They think they have all this time to get things done. Next thing you know, boom, it's December. And they're rushing to get things done. They're rushing to get things done. They're rushing to get things done. And then the goal that they set in January 1st for what they're going to accomplish in a year ahead, they fall short because they think they have so much time to get things done. Here's the bottom line. What King Solomon is saying in this scripture, he says, wake up and stop procrastinating. Again, I know that's not a popular message, but if you don't like your situation, here's the thing. Unless somebody feels great pain, and uh, I, I don't wish pain upon anybody, but sadly, here's a reality for a lot of people. Unless one feels great pain, only then can they choose to change. So in your situation, how bad is bad enough supposed to get? 
How bad is bad enough supposed to feel like? How bad is bad supposed to exist? And when my kids looked at me and said, Papi, I want this, I want that, I'm hungry, I, I need to do this, I can't, I keep making excuses. How did I feel as a dad? For me, I had to wake up and stop procrastinating and apply diligence in my life. Bottom line, you've got to take the responsibilities of things that are happening in your life and how you're investing and spending your time. Number two, if you want to have steps towards doing the impossible, consider defining your vision. And the Bible states here is this. Proverbs 28, verse 19, it reads like this. Without vision, people perish. So again, you can be working hard, you can be working hard, but smart when he says, man, I need to cast the vision. Here is where we're going as a company. Here's where we're going as a family. Here's what your last name is going to be defined by. With this generation, without vision, people perish. Or is it just work? Is it just work? Is it just work? What's the vision you're casting? And so when we're looking at your business, when we're looking at your career, we're looking at the endeavors that you're about and you're about to apply diligence, guess what you have to apply? Where are we going? Hey fam, what do you want to do? Here's what I want to do. Here's what we're looking to accomplish. Let's get on the same page. Let's unify and let's work together. And as I wrap this up, just consider this. Diligence is going to help you do the impossible. But diligence isn't just saying, oops, oh, we made a mistake. Now let's go find wisdom. Let's be diligent now. No. If you have a goal, you have something you want to recover, you want to, to pursue something, seek diligence from the beginning. Seek wisdom from the beginning. Guess what happens to your journey? You're going to get to wherever you want to go. You're going to rebuild whatever you need to rebuild sooner or faster. And what a lot of people thought was impossible, guess what? Through God and his principles, through Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, through King Solomon, he will make possible for you. So with that being said, guys, I'm excited to hear your thoughts, your feedback. I'm excited to see what God is about to do in your lives for his glory, for his kingdom, as we pursue our own individual efforts to be a benefit to everybody around us. So I hope you have some thoughts and feedback. Put it in the comment section below. I'd love to know what some of the things you're thinking about. And, and before I let you go, please consider watching this video right here to follow more about these thoughts. That's something that I thought was impossible, how to become a multimillionaire through the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Check out this video here, how the Bible helped me become a millionaire to serve other people, again, to benefit his people. So that being said, guys, again, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our Facebook business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Let's <laughs> go.